Hi everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Scapper 2020 the series. Um, it's dive day, yay! And this is dive number 1, so nice little shallow on this. Uh, we've got a couple of divers in the group that weren't really dive fresh, so to speak. So uh, today we're doing a nice little simple one, uh, it's the F2 and barge. So the F2 sits in about 16 meters of water, uh, max depth, and is actually a World War II wreck, not a World War I wreck. Um, apparently she was captured um, during the war and was kind of war booty, uh, and was basically just dumped in scapa flow and left to rot for the duration of the war. Um, word has it, or the story goes, that um, the young yokels uh, were rowing out to her in the night and basically <laughs> stripping her of all the good metal uh, and then scrapping it in for a bit of extra cash. Uh, at the end of the war, the wreck was sold to a salvage company and uh, apparently said yokels uh, who had been robbing uh, were a bit worried that they'd get busted. So uh, one night, both the F2 and the barge mysteriously disappeared. So uh, that's the story as I was told it, as I'm telling it to you. So uh, yeah, uh, interesting uh, story that anyway. So yeah, first dive excitement got the better of me here and uh, we're doing far more teabagging than I would normally do for the simple reason that uh, some pillock, uh, i.e. me, had forgot to clip his slob knob uh, onto, his re onto his chest steering. So uh, Dave was having to fish it from behind me and uh, get it clipped on. But uh, yeah, schoolboy first dive over excitement error. So uh, yeah, don't do that. Gotta say, always one of my favourite parts of a dive. This descending the shot line. It's just the anticipation. What's the wreck going to be like? What's the fizz going to be like? Um, yeah, it's just where the excitement builds for me. Uh, what's your favourite part of a dive? Let me know down below. So the shot line on this wreck is tied into the bow. Um, the actual very bow of the ship is behind me as we're sort of orientated now. She lies on her port side. Uh, so uh, we're going to go down um, sort of the right hand side of her. So this is the deck uh, as we're looking at it that's to our left here. Um, and very shortly I'll sort of speed it up. We'll see an anchor capstan. And my first gun of um, Scapper 2020, which I kind of don't really remember seeing, and we'd, I don't take a lot of footage of it, so I'm, I'm, I'm still sort of get finding my feet. So uh, yeah, a little bit odd. Apologies for that, anyway. But there she is. If you can just see just to the left of the picture now, you can just see the barrel. There's the barrel, and in the distance, sort of the shield. Um, and I'm just really not sure whether I twig this on or not on this dive. I, I don't remember. Um, I've not got a lot of footage of it, so I'm guessing probably not. So apologies for that, guys. But there we are, our first Scapper 2020 gun.
So as you can see, a um, bit of a scrapyard at the back here. Um, at some point after the war, uh, once the boat had sunk, um, it was declared a bit of a hazard to shipping. So um, the Royal Navy did what the Royal Navy does best and uh, blew the crap out of it. So um, I'm afraid the back end of the boat <coughs> is um, pretty flat and there's not too much recognizable. It's it's to me anyway, it uh, looks a bit of a, a, a scrapyard. So um, I'm not sure if this is interesting. So I want to ask you a favor before I edit the rest of these videos, guys. Um, what I've done with this video is I've just, you're basically gonna see everything. Um, and all I'm gonna do is just sort of fast forward the bits that I think aren't very interesting, <laughs> um, just so the videos aren't the sort of the full 45 minutes an hour long. Um, so I've edited this a few different ways and you know I've cut out the bits um, but for me that you don't really get the orientation and you can get lost um, or, or certainly I do when I watch it in just in chunks I don't understand where we are from one chunk to the next um, the other option is just let it play in full which you know I don't know might be a bit too tedious so let me know now below how do you want to see these guys is this the best way just sort of fast forwarding through the bits that um, are possibly not the most interesting or do you want to see in the flesh or you know what's the general consensus let me know and I will um, edit to the masses requests I guess yeah once a squidge fan always a squidge fan that's me yep waving at fish that's what I do yeah, I'm effectively like the Dr. Doolittle of the underwater world. Um, the only problem is, is the animals don't talk back to me. <laughs> As you can see, um, the viz on this dive was pretty epic for UK diving. I really couldn't moan about the viz. And the sea temperatures uh, all week were, were about 14 degrees, uh, kind of as I predicted. So uh, the wet gloves were definitely uh, a win. Um, no messing about with dry gloves because uh, I didn't feel cold on pretty much any dive. Maybe right at the end after doing a fair chunk of deco, just hanging at six. But uh, yeah, not too bad at all. All right, we're at the back of the boat now, or the stern, or the bum end, and um, this is one of the features we were told to look at by the skipper, and basically what you've got here, just to the sort of left of the shot coming into view now, is a cylinder bank. Um, now, they are normally to sort of power torpedo tubes to, you know, squirt the torpedo out of the tube before uh, its motors take over. Um, this boat didn't have torpedo tubes, so um, the skipper said she was a bit of a loss of uh, why this had got the cylinder bank, but it's clearly there. Um, so yeah, if you know why this boat would have a cylinder bank like that when it doesn't have a torpedo tube, please let me know down below. So another few uh, bits of interest here. You see the cog just to the sort of center of the screen. Um, that apparently is the uh, top of the rudder, the, some of the gear mechanism that um, uh, operates the rudder. And uh, this thing, we were a bit confused, so we had to go back and ask the skipper, and it's like, what is this massive concrete block doing here? And, and that's all it is. Apparently it's just a mooring block, a massive block uh, with a, a one King Grip guy in it, so you can moor the boat. Uh, there was a couple here. Uh, and there's one you'll see a little bit later um, towards the bow of the ship 
uh, and one quite away off the bow. Oh yeah, this is uh, quite nice. Um, even I recognise this. So this is the prop support. Um, so the prop would have, uh, so well the prop shaft you can see going through sort of the bearing housing there, uh, and that would have been uh, attached to the uh, hull of the boat and support the prop. So uh, even I could recognise that. So that was kind of the, the stern and the interest bits there. So we're just moving forward now. And what we're doing, we're looking for the rope uh, that connects the F2 and the barge so divers don't get lost. So uh, yeah, just moving towards the bow now down the other side of the ship, uh, looking for said rope. One thing I should definitely note on this wreck is because it shows so shallow, uh, she does have a lot more marine life growing on her than any of the other wrecks. Um, so uh, yeah, there's there's bits of kelp and there's there's various bits of what I would determine as plant life. Although I'm sure people in the know would tell me that it's too deep to have plant life and they're actually animals, but they look like plants anyway. Um, so here we are. Here's the rope that connects it. it nothing flash, just a bit of uh, just a bit of rope. So here we are at the barge. Um, I found actually the barge a bit more interesting than the F2. So it's clearly wooden construction with a lot of the uh, sort of outer um, timbers are, are fallen away, which has left quite an interesting sort of lattice work uh, to look at. And in a minute, we go into the hold and have a look through it. And it was actually prettier uh, than what the camera shows to be to be fair. So um, bigger than I expected. I, I don't know what size boat I expected when they said there was a little barge uh, but it's, it's, it's quite a bit bigger than I thought so uh, here's Dave just uh, going down into I guess we'll call this hold one um, nothing of massive interest in here or nothing that we were told to look out for apart from the nice view uh, out the side uh, everything of interest is kind of in the next um, hold so I'll come back to you when we get there So uh, at this point, I put my first scratch on my uh, GoPro case. Uh, I think the camera goes quite hard into... Ooh, ah, yeah, um, that left quite a scar, I'll be honest. So I'm <laughs> just checking that the uh, camera's still there, which it was, so it's all good. But uh, yeah, I'm afraid uh, it won't be the last time you see me head put something with the camera. Okay guys, so here we are, hold two, and there's definitely something of interest in here. So you can see, hopefully, the two pointy barrel things uh, pointing at you sort of mid-screen now. Um, yeah, they're actually um, a set of anti-aircraft guns uh, from the F2 just over the way there. 
uh, and uh, it's obviously what they've salvaged. Now there is actually a second set in there as well but they're sort of laid down flat and you can't see them very well so in a second you're going to see me do a very poor attempt at a, a drawing to try and highlight them for you so um, yeah I do apologize for this it does look like a two-year-old's done it but uh, let's have a look they're there anyway yeah like I said ever so sorry about that uh, but but you know quite cool to see and definitely something that you want to check out when you're doing this dive So we're just uh, sinking below the uh, top deck here uh, because just under here is a little old workshop thing that everybody on the go boat got very excited about and this is where I don't get wreck diving okay so this um, oh, just checking the gun there making sure I'm not sat on it so yeah um, see workbench uh, some little pigeonhole things for screws and nuts and that kind of stuff and then this rusty lump of snot there look it, that's a vice um, now it's a vice but uh, it generated quite a bit of interest on the deck uh, on the boat oh there's a vice like wow uh, I didn't get it but anyway this thing that we're looking at now is actually a rad for a uh, very large petrol compressor that was all uh, also uh, on the barge and they used for whatever uh, but that was you know that was quite interesting uh, but yeah I, I really didn't get the vice um, I don't know, they're just not that exciting to me. Uh, not exciting, but put it underwater for 100 years until it becomes exciting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the barge, guys. We, we come back up and have a bit closer look at this AA gun now. Um, but, but that's pretty much it. Um, so uh, we'll have a quick scoot round and then back over and finish the dive on the F2. So my buddy Dave was behind me, um, just doing a bit of videoing, and uh, I saw these uh, tracks of bubbles, so uh, ever nosy, I uh, popped my head over to the side. Seeing Amanda down there, so I'm guessing uh, Matt, her dive buddy, was behind her, but uh, there's little Dave, and uh, I think we go and join up, and I think we bump, actually bump into uh, Vince and Dean at this point as well. Uh, Vince is the chap in the orange fins, and Dean... Uh, is the uh, ninja black one and uh, you know this is how we roll in uh, Ponty because uh, this was Dean's first hard boat dive and first dive trip and he's doing scapper so uh, good on him and uh, a fair crack to be honest with you uh, he's only just completed his uh, sports diver so he's pretty green uh, and I thought he did very well uh, on this on this week so it's uh, you know it's it's a tough week and uh, he did well so uh, hats off to him So back at the rope, uh, going back to the F2, when we get back to the F2 we're going to uh, right hand down and uh, carry on back towards the bow. Um, you'll see as we get there, you actually, by the time you go back to this rope and, and turn right, you're not too far away from the shot line. So um, yeah, we, we can go and have a look at uh, the uh, the bow, which is actually, you know, sort of the, the most well preserved bit of the boat, uh, having not been blown up I guess.
Yeah, so as we're finning along, if you just look up, you can see the shot line just there. Um, so we're really not too far away from uh, where we started the dive, except uh, obviously we're on the other side of the boat, so we're on the hull side rather than the deck side. So uh, we are literally just coming up on, on the bow now. And uh, what I do here is uh, swim off into the distance and uh, turn around so I can get you know, the uh, Titanic you know, bow shot. Um, unfortunately, it was a bit disappointing. <laughs> So yeah, although we had cracking viz, uh, it wasn't the viz enough to, to really get the, the, the shot that I was hoping for, so uh, never mind, it was worth a punt, wasn't it? So here we're just scooting off to have a look at this object in the distance, which um, turned out to be one of these mooring blocks again. Um, so uh, not vastly interesting. The reason I did shoot out there is because as part of a brief, uh, Emily had said that uh, a couple of gearboxes had been sort of been thrown clear of the wreck uh, during the blasting. Um, and although we were quite obviously, you know, near the front, um, I thought it might be one of them, but it wasn't. It was just one of these concrete blocks. So uh, fast forward there and then back. <laughs> It's really not that interesting. Again, um, we are basically back to where we started the dive. So uh, you'll see me signal to Dave just here. Uh, what do you want to do? And we sort of say, do you want to go around again? So we've got a bit more dive time, so we we uh, sort of go and have a, another scoot down the uh, deck of the boat, but this time uh, from a little bit higher elevation. And we see some different stuff and stickers heads in. Um, but um, you remember that capstan uh, that we saw right at the beginning of the dive in the fast forwarded bit? Well, we're going to come across that again very, very shortly. Um, and then uh, see the gun again from a little bit of a higher elevation. And um, the other thing that we do on this one is, uh, or in a minute, is uh, we were told to have a good look at the uh, capstan gear mechanism. Because on this boat, with it being a World War II boat, was uh, it was all driven by, the capstans were driven by an electric motor. Whereas uh, on the rest of the fleet that we're going to see over the rest of the week, um, it was all done by steam power. So some little differences there and if you're into your engineering uh, quite interesting it was quite interesting um, I, I enjoyed it so here's the capstan and in a minute we'll stick his head through the deck and we'll go and have a look at the mechanism So yeah, here we go. So um, obviously the base of the capstan there and another one above it because there was two capstans on the deck originally. I think there's only one uh, surviving. I don't know where the other one's gone. And then in the middle, that bit in the middle there is the big electric drive motor that would uh, drive them, the drive motor and the gearing. Um, yeah, sorry, that's me turning the video light on, seeing if it looked any better. It doesn't, so we'll switch it straight back off again and we'll just have a bit of a snoop around with the torch.
By this point, we are moving back into sort of the scrapyardy area, so we're just sort of gliding over it a little bit higher. Um, there's really, I, I didn't recognize it too much more, to be honest with you. I think the only thing I saw was um, like a switch panel with some ceramic switches. Or I think they're more Bakelite, uh, if you remember that from back, if you're old enough, uh, there were some Bakelite switches. I think there they are, yeah. So, so they were interesting to look at. Um, but like I say, the, the rest of it is, is pretty much in bits. Uh, I think we finished the dive by uh, scooting over midships and ending back on the hull side. Uh, just as we are sort of heading back to the shot line uh, and coming back to the surface. Well, fortunately, my GoPro battery sort of does give up after about an hour, so um, I'll let you run through this last, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, if you'd like to like, uh, share, subscribe, and press that little bell notification button, uh, it will be very much appreciated, and it would also guarantee that you uh, shouldn't miss any of the other upcoming videos. Um, the next video next week is going to be our first visit to the SMS Karlsruhe, uh, which I think is uh, I pronounce it properly. Um, and so this is our first uh, proper World War One wreck and our first proper World War One sort of big gun. So uh, yeah, definitely don't want to miss out on that. So I'll leave you to it here, guys. Uh, have a great day. Um, again, hope you're getting out diving and uh, dive safe.